Dear Christopher, here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. James was enjoying his life on the island of Sodor, but he still had a lot to learn. You're a special mixed traffic engine, said the fat controller. You can pull coaches or trucks quite easily, but you must learn by your mistakes. James knew what the fat controller meant. He could well remember that dreadful accident on his first day. Be careful with the coaches, James, said Edward. They don't like being bumped. Everyone came to admire James. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. A shower of water fell on the fat controller's nice new top hat. Just then, the guard blew his whistle, and James thought they had better go. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, replied Edward. The coaches were grumbling too. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast. But James didn't listen. When at last they stopped at the next station, two coaches were beyond the platform. They had to go back to let the passengers out. But no one seemed to know about the fat controller's top hat, though James felt happier. Presently they came to the station where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches. Hello James, said Thomas. Feeling better? That's right. Oh, that's my guard's whistle. I must go. I don't know what the fat controller would do without me to run this branch line. And he puffed off importantly. Edward and James passed the field where James had had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back again. They ended their journey and rested before setting off for home. James was still wondering what the fat controller would have to say about his top hat. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to him. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James didn't like that at all. He was very rough with the grumbling coaches as he brought them to the platform. Don't talk, come on, he called to them. Gordon never has to fetch his own coaches, he thought to himself, and he's only painted blue. To make James even more cross, this time no one came near him. I'll show them, he thought. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, replied the coaches. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, they said, we're going to stop. <coughs> What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on, leak in the pipe most likely. You've banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. How shall we mend it? said the guard. We'll do it with newspaper and a leather bootlace, replied the driver. Well, where is the bootlace coming from, asked the guard. Ask the passengers, said the driver. You have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the guard to a smartly dressed man. Please give it to me. I won't, said the man. Then, said the guard, I'm afraid the train will just stop where it is. The passengers all said what a bad railway it was. Then they told the man how bad he was instead. Everyone was very cross. At last, he handed his laces over. The driver tied a pad of newspaper tightly round the hole in the brake pipe, and James was able to pull the train.
But he was a sadder and wiser James and took care never to bum coaches again.